Now for this part of the question then, we're told to show that this equation has exactly two real solutions using a part two. Well, in a part two, we found that we had this equation, which is very similar to what we've got here. Do you notice it's exactly the same if I was to let x equal y squared? So when I'm looking at this, remember we factorized this equation and it gave us this result here. So that means that if I was to let x equal y squared, we've got our equation above here, as we see, I can factorize it. Where if I see an x here, just replace it with y squared. So we end up with this result. So it's just a question now of solving this equation. So that means we can put each of these factors equal to zero. So taking this equation here, if I add two to both sides and then take the square root, you end up with y equaling plus or minus root two. So what we have here are two real solutions. So that seems to suggest then that if we've got to show that the equation up here has exactly two real solutions, I would expect this equation to have no solutions. Well, if we look at it closely, we can see that it's a quadratic equation in y squared. We've got the y squared here, and if we square it, we're going to get the y to the power 4 there. All right. So being a quadratic in y squared, if it's to have no solution, I would expect the discriminant, that is b squared minus 4ac, to be a negative number. If you're unsure about discriminants, do check out my tutorials on that. So we have the a in the quadratic is minus 3, the b is the 2, and the c is the minus 5. So using b squared minus 4ac, what we get is the b squared minus 4 times a times c there. Work this out, you've got 4 minus 60, which is going to give you minus 56, and it is a negative number, so we'd expect no real solution. So as you can see, there's only two real solutions coming from this part of the equation. y equals plus or minus root 2. Okay?